In this video, our second video on the hyperbolic trig functions, we're going to look at some of their properties. So one thing we can see is that the cinch function is an odd function, just like the sine function is. Cinch of negative x is negative cinch of x. Cosh is an even function. Cosh of negative x is the same as cosh of x. Both of those are easy to show by either looking at their graphs or by going to their definition. And we've got some identities that remind us of our trig identities. For example, cosh squared x minus cinch squared x equals 1. So this is a big difference between the uh, circular trig functions. So cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1, but cosh squared x minus cinch squared x equals 1. And you can kind of see a connection to a hyperbola here because we know that for a circle, we could have x squared plus y squared equals 1. That would be an equation of a circle. But if I have x squared minus y squared equals 1, that would be an equation of a hyperbola. So that fits then, that cosh squared x minus cinch squared x equals 1 for hyperbolic trig functions. And then I can do the same uh, operation that I did with the circular trig functions, but I'm going to divide now every term by cosh squared x. That gives me 1 minus tan squared x equals sec squared x. Or I could have to divide it by sinh squared x. I didn't write that down because it doesn't come up very much. Uh, we actually have an addition formula. x and y don't represent angles like they do with the uh, trig functions. Uh, but still, we have a, an addition formula that uh, looks um, exactly like our uh, addition formula for the trig functions, the circular trig functions. And uh, the cosine, so the cosh addition formula, is not quite the same uh, as with the circular trig functions, because here we have a plus rather than a minus. But from these addition formulas, if I have y equal to x, then I get these new identities. Again, we can't call them double angle formulas because the x doesn't represent an angle. But still, we'd have cinch of 2x equals 2 cinch of x cosh of x. And cosh of 2x would be cosh squared x plus cinch squared x. And uh, I could use my hyperbolic identity over here and get a uh, cosh of 2x equaling 1 plus 2 cinch squared x, or cosh of 2x equals 2 cosh squared x minus 1. So let's do an example. I'm given that tanch of x is 12 over 13, and we'd like to find the value of the other five hyperbolic trig functions for the same value of x. So I'll use my identities. I'll start by using sec squared equaling 1 minus tan squared. So 1 minus 12 over 13 squared. And work that out to get sec squared x is 25 over 169 or sec of x would be 5 over 13. Now, cosh of x is 1 over sec of x. So from sec of x, I just take its reciprocal to get cosh of x equals 13 over 5. Once I know cosh, then I can use my other identity to find sec of x. So let's solve that for sec squared x. Sec squared x would be cosh squared x minus 1. So work that out. So cinch squared x is 144 over 25, or cinch of x is 12 over 5. 
Now, cosech of x is just 1 over sinh of x, so take the reciprocal and get 5 over 12 for cosech of x. So the only thing that's left is koth of x. I could go to the definition kosh of x over sinh of x. And so I would take uh, kosh of x, 13 over 5, times the reciprocal of sinh of x, and that would give me 13 over 12. But I could have just got straight there by taking the reciprocal of tanch of x to get 13 over 12. So uh, certainly uh, sinh of x is a one-to-one -one function. So it has an inverse. And let's see if we can come up with an expression for the inverse of sinh of x. So I'll go ahead and write that as y equals 1 half times the quantity e to the x minus e to the negative x. Swap the x's and the y's. And I'm going to try to solve for y. Multiply by 2 on each side. Rewrite e to the negative y as 1 over e to the power of y. And then multiply every term by e to the power of y. What does this give me? Well, it gives me a quadratic-like function e to the power of 2y is e to the power of y squared. So I can think of this as e to the power of y squared minus 2x times e to the power of y minus 1 equals 0. And now let's treat e to the power of y as a variable u. You can make a change of variable formally, but I'm just going to think of this as my mentally as my variable u. And then I could apply the quadratic formula with a equals 1, b equals negative 2x, and c equals negative 1. So then e to the power of y would be negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2. Now I can simplify that. After first multiplying that out, I see there's a common factor of 4 under the radical. So radical of 4 is 2. Then there's a common factor of 2 in the numerator and the denominator. And then I could say, well, wait a minute. Uh, this is e to the y. It has to be positive. So I cannot accept the uh, minus radical part. I only take the plus radical part. And now I get back to y, I'll write the equivalent log equation. So y equals the natural log of the quantity x plus radical x squared plus 1. And that is our formula for the inverse sinh function. Now I can do the same thing for cosh, but I have to be careful with cosh, right? Because Kosh is not one-to-one. -one. Uh, so I'm going to have to restrict myself to only one branch. I'm going to take the branch where x is positive. And so when I go through the same operations here and apply the quadratic formula, I'm going to get a slightly different expression. And in that expression, I can see that to avoid a negative sign under the radical sign, I want x to be greater than or equal to 1, which makes sense because in the original function, y was greater than or equal to 1. So our expression for inverse cosh is the natural log of x plus radical x squared minus 1. So minus 1 now, where x is greater than or equal to 1. And we can do the same thing for tanch. Now tanch is a one-to-one -one function, so there's no need to make a restriction uh, on its domain. But uh, we do notice that the range is bounded between negative 1 and positive 1. So y goes between negative 1 and positive 1. So if I interchange the roles of x and y, that means that uh, I haven't done that yet. Here we go. 
this part doesn't quite apply yet. So let me go ahead and make that correction here. Really, this is still saying, should say Y. But then when I exchange the roles of X and Y, then the restriction is on X. So if I want to solve this for Y, I'll know that I'm going to be restricted to input values to the inverse function, which are between negative 1 and 1. All right, so when I multiply both sides by the quantity e to the y plus 1 over e to the y, then what I'm going to do is multiply every term on both sides by e to the y to clear the fractions. And then what I'll do is I'll factor out, uh, I'm going to get all of the terms that have an e to the 2y on one side, and then I'll get all of the other terms on the left-hand side, factor out the e to the 2y, solve for e to the 2y, then write the equivalent log equation, which is say 2y equals natural log of the fraction 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And so y equals half of that natural log expression. And so inverse tangent is 1 half natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And so now we are going to have this uh, condition that x has to be between negative 1 and 1. And that will ensure that uh, we will never have a zero in the denominator. It also ensures that we never have zero as an input, which we can't have a, a zero as an input to a log function. So in summary, our inverse hyperbolic trig functions uh, involve expressions using the natural log, which makes sense because the uh, hyperbolic trig functions are defined in terms of exponentials, so it makes sense that their inverses will be defined in terms of the natural log. And uh, for both Kosh and Tanch, we have restrictions on the inputs. Now what's left is for us to do some calculus using these inverse trig functions, and that will be the next video.